Looks like we got our work cut out for us. Got a lot of bullets that Uncle Jim sent me. Really appreciate this. And we're gonna see what we could do with a 350 legend. Kind of funny. On the Rainier lead safe, these are supposed to be a flat point design. Found one of these in there. I don't know if that's a oopsie, but Double wad cutter. <laughs> awesome. I don't know if they'll feed and the AR, of course. But we're going to give it a try single feeding them. See what this does. Just to be funny. So, let me show you the process of gas checking the taco bullets. I'm gas checking these because, of course, we're pushing these at a high pressure. We're using an NOE push through sizing die, and I got a 357 uh, push through bushing in it. Now, with these gas checks, it takes quite a bit of force. These are homemade gas checks. So, I'm using my mech marksman, it's got quite a bit of leverage on it. And I put them upside down. You can see the bushing there. The sizing wax will also help out as well. You'll see here, it's quite a bit of force to seat that gas jack. All said and done. All said and done, we got ourselves a gas checked taco bullet. So you can see here that it's sized to 357. My 350 Legend is a 9mm barrel. So it's got a 355 um, bore, basically, 9 millimeter. So 357, cast lead gas check bullet. That should do pretty good. Uncle Jim's famous FBG, fat bottom girl. We're going to push these to 2,000 FPS. Here's the bullet pre-FBG. It's the Lyman 358, 156, gas checked. We'll see what this does around 2200 FPS. So I made a dummy cartridge and as you can see we got a problem. It is not feeding correctly and actually what I found the problem to be is a combination of the M4 feed ramps being too steep and also the magazine. So basically what seems to be happening is not the feed ramps itself it's the fact that the magazine has a little bit of slop causes the back of the bullet to dip uh, therefore, the bolt carrier group skips over the cartridge and, of course, jams up right here. Now, the marring you're seeing is the M4 feed ramps. Now, what's funny is if I make this mag a complete 10 round and use this as the first round out of the mag, causing basically no slop in that magazine, it will feed on the AR. So you see it there. See? So it's not necessarily the M4 feed ramps, but what I'm going to try to do is lower the ramps themselves. That way it doesn't cause the bullet to, I guess, ride up so, uh, so steep. And hopefully that will alleviate the issue. Now with the barrel removed, I'm going to grind down a little bit of the M4 feed ramp, give it less of a steep angle and see if that helps out. Now with the M4 feed ramp slightly ground down, we'll put this back together and see if this helps out before I give it a final polish. All right, here's the test. Yeah, not yet. All right, end result, slightly ground down M4 feed ramp. 
didn't touch anything on the sides you don't want to do that you want to keep just the middle portion of the feed ramp and grind that portion down and try to follow the same contour so of course I uh, did a high polish at the end and this is what I'm getting now and you want to test both sides of the feed ramp so let's, this is on the other side now and that's feeding great and here it is with the Lyman pre-FBG and gas jet. Awesome. Now I can feed flat point bullets. Now here's the only downside. Now I'm fighting basically a magazine spring issue. On the last round, I'll have that same issue still. As you can see there. Basically, the magazine spring tension isn't enough to keep the follower from being depressed, thus skipping over the uh, the bolt carry group. So simple modification on the mag, I think I can fix that. Okay, simple magazine mod. You guys are gonna laugh at what I used, but it now feeds on the last round. All right, so here's the taco bullet. Magazine mod, feeding good. Okay, believe it or not, what I use is a little bit of Corrugated board, aka cardboard. Now this is a little 10 round magazine. So I'll cut out a little piece that's about the same size as the base plate. And there we go. Add a little bit of spring tension. Now I'm not really too sure of the 30 round magazines. Seems like the issue is basically the follower, like I said, is not that much spring tension. Especially if you got a weakened Magpul mag. But M Carbo, I believe, makes a increase a spring kit, and uh, basically, what you got to do on these Magpul mags is, if you see that little ridge on the side there, you have to modify that, and remove those ridges, and basically make it a flat. I don't know if you can see it here. Basically, you can see where I grinded it off, but make it flat. That way, the cases it's a straight wall will basically feed correctly. Okay, so I'll go through the whole process of how I'm loading up the 350 Legend. We are using the Lee Value Tour Press in indexing mode. Believe it or not, I'm using nine millimeter dies. The so station number one, of course, is the uh, decapping die, falling sizing carbide die. What I ended up doing was honing the die out just a little bit to somewhat match my chamber measurements and be about two thousands undersized from the body. So I used an emery cloth and a uh, round stock bar and honed it out that way. Station 2 is going to be my Lee Universal Expanding Die. It does have a NOE expanding plug to help with the case neck expansion. Get it to a uh, 357 diameter. Give a slight bell. In Station 3 we're going to be using the 9mm um, powder through expanding die. And I'll be using the... Uh, brass smith that's going to be loaded up here and dumping powder into there with a funnel so that's going to be pretty cool last station of course is going to be the bullet seating die and of course that's just going to seat the bullet so as you can tell these dies are backed out quite a bit especially on his last threads and that's basically how i'm loading up 350 legend all right so we're using magnum small rifle primers 450s we're going to be loading these bullets right up to that top crimp line and that's where I got to seat the bullet so it doesn't jam into the lands. And we're going to be using Hodge Don Little Gun starting off at 24 and a half grains. I'm using Quick Load to verify my load data. For the cases, we're using Starline straight walled that is trimmed to 1.712. Sammy Spec says 1.710. I did a chamber measurement and uh, 1 2 that seems to fit my, my needs. Okay, first stage is folding sizing course, and uh, I'm going to be priming on the downstroke. Second stage, I got the universal expanding die and a lead insert. It's going to expand that case mount just to fit that 357 bullet. Third, uh, third stage would be my powder through expanding die, and I'm going to dump charge. And since we're trickling the loads up. Verify that real quick. Okay, 
24.3 grains is what that dumped. So let me trickle up to 24 and a half. 24 and a half, trickled up. Final stage, of course, is a bullet seating. So again, we're going to seat these bullets right up to that second, um, I guess, uh, crimp line. So how this 9mm uh, bullet seating die works is that it has a built-in roll crimp. What you want to do, since the cartridge indexes off the case mouth, you don't want to use that roll crimp. So I use it uh, kind of a feel method and I get to where I feel that stop and basically that's where I stop seating the bullet. So as you can see here, that is the taco bullet loaded up, gas checked, 24 and a half grains. We're going to do uh, three shot groups. Um, so let me load up three more of these. After that, we'll be loading up some Lyman 358, 156, gas checked style, and then Uncle Jim's famous FBGs. Well, to skip all the load development and get to the good part, I ended up shooting three shot groups and I found an accuracy note starting to come in around 25 grains. So I went back home, reloaded up five shot groups, and I actually loaded up 10 with 25.5 grains of Hodgdon Little Gun. Case overall length with a Taco 185 grain gas check bullet is 2.044. Now with the chronograph data, I captured all 10 shots and the average velocity was 2,056 FPS. Not bad for a 10 inch barrel shooting a 185 grain taco bullet. Standard deviation was 11.8, extreme spread was 32. All right, we'll do something cool. Slow motion request from Uncle Jim. Let's pause the video. Let me know, comment below, how many jugs do you think a 185 taco bullet will penetrate? We're at 50 yards. Let's see what this does. See if we can capture a bullet. All right. Hope everybody's got their guess in. Let's see what this does. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Well, what was your guys' guess? I think it went through every single one of them. That's, I think that was the second jug. I don't think we captured a bullet. It's like the first jug. Got some leakage here. Wait a minute. Where's the bullet? Did we capture it? Oh, there's a bullet. I think. Oh, there it is. This was the third jug. Entry wound, exit wound. And then it looks like entry wound right here. And looks like we got a bullet on the fourth jug. Boom. Wow. Check that out. You guys seeing this? Look at that expansion. Come on, camera. Got ADD doesn't focus. All right, look at that. That is insane. Fully intact, fourth jug. And we'll go back, measure the retained weight. Gas check, of course, is gone, but that's a gnarly, gnarly mushroom. Fourth jug, cool. Well, the fun continues. Got some produce. 
See if you get some slow motion footage out of this. All right, we're gonna play Fruit Ninja. Our toss some salad. Okay, it literally smells like uh, fruit salad. <laughs> That's some crazy carnage. And stem. Check that out. There's a stem. <laughs> Hopefully that slow-mo footage came in pretty good. The last shot on the green cabbage with a 180 grain taco bullet, that was very, very explosive. Insane. Half. The other half of the pineapple? <laughs> no, the other half of the cabbage. Oh man, cabbage head. So, what do you guys think? Cast lead bullet going, uh, you know, 185 grain cast lead bullet doing about just under 2100 FPS. It's got a lot of power behind it. Well, guys, that's going to do it for today's testing. I think we got an acceptable load with a taco bullet. I think I could work with it a little bit. Uh, they has a little bit of a feeding issue. I think I need to size the bullet down to 356. The ogive is a little bit, uh, I guess, fat, and it's hitting the chamber walls of the rifle. So, other than that, these things are pretty gnarly. And if this was a bolt gun um, with a longer barrel, I wonder what kind of speed we get and what kind of velocities and explosive reaction we'll get out of those targets. So... That's coming up pretty soon. Working on a Savage Access that I will be converting into the 350 Legend. And there's also another cartridge in a 357 family that I'm looking at. Full Lead Taco uh, did a cool little short video on this. Those who are following probably know what I'm talking about. And um, I might be getting into that as well to do some comparisons. Besides that, a flat point bullet, that kind of expansion... That's some crazy stuff. I think with a cast lead bullet, that's a pretty good hunting round. We'll come back and uh, we'll measure the weight, see what kind of retention we got. But yeah, I'm pretty happy to see that. Well guys, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around. Thanks for joining. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little video. Ah, uh, get out of here, fly. This is moth, Dad. <laughs> like moth so on my camera. Like so From Chicken Hawk and Eagle Eye, we'd like to say thanks for watching. Stick around, stay tuned. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Purple pineapple. Purple pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty. See ya. Bye.